Oh, this is the May 2024 Kawhi Web Dev Stake. And what did George have for lunch meeting? Chipotle, uh, spicing it up. They're literally less than two blocks from here. That's handy. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, is there anything anybody wants to talk about this month? I guess I should ask that before we start the recording, because if not, then this recording is going to be pretty sorry. I think I got nothing. Everything I've been doing, I've been has been Aspen related, so. Well, I tried to incorporate the limiting and uh, sorting that Jason and then Christopher put in the kids' outpack. And I have it working, but um, the way we're structured, um, I'll have my location codes are either like picture book or new picture book. So when <clears throat> I use what I think I'm using what Christopher had, he's got variables or something in there. So I end up getting two buttons that say picture book and one is for the regular picture book code and one is for the new picture book code. And so I'm thinking I probably can't use this because I don't know that I can get around that. Let me share my screen if I can. Do you see it? Um, that's uh, agent share it is what we're seeing. I do have two. Share. Let me share the stuff. Share. I chose the other screen because I thought that's what it was. But let's go back to that one. How about yep, now? that's your kids' go back. So I end up getting this picture book, and that's for my new picture books. And they end up getting this picture book, which is my regular picture books. And they are, you know, if you were using the regular faceting, that is how they display. So I'm thinking with what y'all did, which looks so great, I'm not sure that I can have one button that says picture books and have them all there for limiting. I'm trying to, so yeah, I think I'm trying to remember if I can bind things online. Because I, Christopher shared his code with me and it does look like it's it's doing that. Um, and I, I struggled because I tried your code and I don't know what was going wrong, but. Mine's a mess. And I've learned that from Christopher because every time he asks me a question, I'm like, why did I do that that way? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So he's been cleaning it up, which is nice. Um, I'm sure it's doable what you want to do. I just don't know if That's I've done what it, it. What I've got in there is he put in um, variables for the different things. And so I just have it as picture books, but it produces two buttons based on my two different location codes. And I right. only... I, just, I just went to your site and that's what I'm seeing is that you want to find a way to combine those into one. Yeah. Into one search and one button. And I don't know off the top of my head how you can do that dynamically. Because mm -hmm. I can only look at this code and try and appropriate it the best. I'm like, okay, if they put that there, then I'll put my code here. And, you know, so then it's like, okay, they're working, but wait a second, two, two buttons, and that's not really going to be the best. Yeah. 
and it's doing it because because you've got new books and then you've got new picture books and it's picking up on picture books the picture books from each of those facets because he's just using a, a contains filter or and contains I, whatever word yeah hmm. and i tried some of yours jason and i tried doing um that's what i'm doing too his is just in a prettier way tried doing something like instead of a contains it was like a starts with or something and I tried some different wild card things and anyway I'm kind of thinking there might not be a way around this but anybody has any ideas It's going to be hard. That's, <laughs> that's my I, idea. Well, it's beyond me, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, like, the, the convenience of using the facets is they're already built. They're already, like, calculating the numbers and all that stuff, um, which I don't think you were doing on yours, maybe. I don't maybe have not. the numbers, but um, so that's not quite as important. So but... you could technically just, like, manually build it because you know what your location codes are so you could you could just make that string associate that with the button but then you i don't know or you could add that string on if you could get it to pull one instance of the um picture books and then add the new picture books location to the search parameter string that might work i don't know yeah ideas lucas sorry i don't i don't quite know what is trying to be achieved and i don't i don't understand well because using christopher's code which gets me my my limiter buttons up here. This picture book is based on my new picture book code, FJPBN, and there's 62 of them. And this picture book is based on my regular picture books, which are FJPB, and there's 499 of those. But so to make this nice for kids, you would want to have one button that says picture books so either I would want those combined together or maybe I sacrifice and just try and somehow present just the new as a limit I don't know so you're trying to rebuild facets essentially well I wasn't intending to do <laughs> I think facets, the idea is to com combine this, two facets into one. Yeah. After I got this working, it's like, oh, I see what it's doing. So the way we're set up, it's like, yeah, that it for presentation and searching for kids and stuff, it would be like, yeah, well, they really need a combined facet. I mean, that's not my intent originally, but we have our our new in our location code and that's not how Jason or Christopher are set up so really that's what it comes down to is you're trying to apply Christopher's solution to the wrong problem you've got a completely different problem than he does yeah, so I, I mean, I, I see how I, I've got the pretty buttons. It's like, this is great, but then yeah, I have an issue. And my regular kids catalog.
has the facets because they wanted it and it has the um, sorting over here but when I saw what Jason did I'm like that looks so much better I want to do that but it presents an issue but it's not just the look it's actually the functionality needs to change yeah. you can't just copy all the links out of the facets and put them nicely on the top right no so say that again do what as if it were me i would not want i would not want to make up my own functionality i would use the functionality that co already has because it's ultimately always going to be better um i would just like be cloning the facets and making them look nice on the top on the buttons that you have and then hiding yeah. the regular facets and um, that's what that's what I'm doing because that does give you all the functionality where you can like clear it, you can have the number count, that sort of stuff. Cause we're just copying it from one place to the other. The tricky part for Barbers is she she's got too many, <laughs> too many categories basically. Um it's like I've got it doing the if I click that one, you know, it's yeah, doing what it's supposed to do. It's just that the issue is that the underlying code there, you've got two codes with the same display name. Yeah. And what you really want is you want the one display name to, to affect two codes. And I think I was able, I can't remember, I've been through so many iterations of this. picture books new maybe it was just new picture books i can't remember at one point i think i did get you know the two i could change it I don't remember what I did, but I either I got I did get one picture books and one new new juvenile picture books or whatever, or I got both of them to say new picture books, which either way you don't really want a repetition because because it's confusing. It's confusing. What's the difference? And you know, and there is a difference. There is a difference in in those two things, and so. I mean, like I, I think the easiest thing to do would be if you can get one to show, and then tack on the other one as an additional, tack it onto the link. So when you click it, it adds on like an or search. And I have no idea how to do that. And I, I did try some things like poking around, just doing some things like maybe putting two things up here, but, you know, I'm playing around with code. I don't really understand. I just have to be able to appropriate it. And Yeah. Why is that? There's a array of arrays called allowed filters, and it's just the same text twice? Well, for mine, I'm not really um, changing it. I think in his example, he had like... Um, He's relabeling it, I think. So like the bottom one in the array there is juvenile graphic novel and he's relabeling it to yeah. just graphic novels, I think. I'm not sure either. I, I think mm. that's what it was because I was confused about that too. But um, so like one is is picking up the code, I guess. And one is the, the second thing is the label that displays. I see.
the thinker. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't implemented Christopher's code yet either. So maybe I'll I'll think about what you're doing when I'm <laughs> implementing that as well. I'm trying to think if there because there were I think there were some things that I wanted to do that way, but I just didn't. Uh, because <laughs> I didn't have time to figure it out. Like, because we've got Juvenile Easy, but we've also got, like, um, Holiday Fiction broken out. So that could be combined in there. Um, and, like, you had one part that used, uh, you were looking at your um, Juvenile Fiction or something, and it was, like, you were using a starting with the wild card or something in one of them. And I tried that kind of thing and I don't know. Oh, yeah. I probably got it in one of my that work. things I've copied over here. I don't think it actually did that. <laughs> I wonder why I did that way. This is my problem. I don't remember why I do things. Well, this one that's highlighted was similar to what you had. And I know you've got a long code that's like uh, numbers and then do thick, yeah. thick or something like that. I don't want to talk about that either. <laughs> I know why I did that that way. <laughs> and so I tried this one and it I can't remember exactly what it did or didn't do, but um, these were more similar to some of the things that were in Jason's code. And this is just stuff I copied in the notepad, not to lose it. Yeah, that's my code down there below where you're highlighted because it's got a lot of redundancies and stuff. And that's what Christopher was trying to clean up with his arrays. So I don't know, like, if you do this thing where location ID contains, you know, let me get to one that like we have juvenile chapter book you know is there a way to make that be juvenile chapter book you know or new juvenile chapter book and then give one button that would be my ultimate Well, if anybody thinks of anything, let me know. Okay. That's our, our homework for next <laughs> month. Think about Barbara's problem. <laughs> um, other stuff people want to talk about? I have a few things I can show off um, if nobody else has anything. I would just say on that problem, maybe you can use something besides contains, like has, um, has, um, and then part of the URL, you could get the actual code instead of the text, if that makes sense. So if you use has, you can say has a href starts with or wildcards, this part of the URL. Maybe. Okay. I'll poke around with some stuff like that. It'll be, you know, the way I'm thinking of it is that if you can just get one of them to display based on the code, then you can have uh, maybe, it, I mean, it'd be really complicated, but to have one of them display because of the code. And when you click on that one, that there's code there that um, also checks also clicks on the hidden one at the same time. That way you'd be getting both of them at the same time. If you had some code, you know, if you could display the one that doesn't have the new part in it, and then, so you just get that one to display and you tell it not to display the one that's the picture book's new. Mm -hmm. And then you have some other code in there that says when you click that one, that it also checks the hidden one at the same time. That might be the way that you can do it and stay in those parameters of keeping it happening dynamically 
instead of having to come up with a bunch of code to replace the, the URL. So that's just what's coming to the top of my head. And we'll play around with some of that. Thank you for thinking about my problem. <laughs> Ellie, did you have something? Yeah, um, so we're looking into address verification. And I know, Barbara, you've recently been talking about this on Slack as well. Um, going back and forth between patron point and message via and yours. But I could have sworn there was someone that presented at the last Koha con about this and integrating it with Koha, but I just can't remember what that Brendan was. Brendan was playing with that. Brendan Lawler, Brendan Lawler was, was playing. playing with the... Uh... USPS API and it's really something that he was looking at that would need to be done as a plug-in because otherwise your USPS API credentials have to be transmitted um, and, and if you do that with jQuery anybody can just use the the uh, tools in any browser to see what those API credentials are so he was thinking about turning it into some kind of a plug-in gotcha. okay, yeah because our concern is cost mainly especially with the Patron point and all of that. Um, so I guess we'll pick his brain about that a little bit more. Cool. We looked Plugins at, definitely the way to go for something yeah. like that. We looked at patron point and for the address verification, um, like on a new card, um, so that they get their card, you know, they fill out the form, they're verified immediately. Um, and my understanding is there's like a whole, you have like a whole duplicate patron database on the patron point side. And I'm not real keen on that. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember exactly my questions. I said, well, if I change something in Koha, does it change something on the patron point side? If I change on that side, does it, you know, is it connected afterwards? Or, you know, will staff change something on the Koha side, but it's different in patron point and what what happens? And then just the thought of having like two databases. Mm -hmm. um, and then the cost overall is just like, wow. And then I checked with um, Kipu. And if you want to talk about cost being, wow, that's like, holy, wow. It was like, there's no way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm really interested in some kind of, of verification, but it's it's it seems like a big. So do these actually verify that that patron is at that address? Mm -hmm. What Brendan was working on was just, is this a valid USPS address using the, the USPS API to say, is 123 Main Street in Lawrence, Kansas, is that a real address? Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't verifying whether or not the who who lived there, it was just verifying the, the validity of the address, so. Okay, I was going back through old, email and cleaning things up and trying to move things out, you know, and I came across and I'd have to look back and see what library it was, but it's a Bywater partner. And they said something about on their self-registration form, and it might be different for Aspen, I don't know, but that on their self-registration form, they had Bywater do something that basically said if you're not like in these zip codes then you don't you can't submit the form and it gives back a like you don't qualify thing okay and i thought well that could be somewhat slightly helpful for us we get some every year we get several um bedford england bedford mass bedford where you know just because um Anyway, I just came across that recently. Okay, maybe I'll tinker with that and reach out to Brendan, see what we can come up with. Thanks.
And it looks like he talked about that in December. So if you want to look at the recording, that's where that stuff's at. All right, thanks. And no, I don't have web devs indexed in my brain. I just remember him emailing me after that meeting, worried that <laughs> the API credentials didn't get uh, it. <laughs> obscured. Uh, so. Um, okay, so I've been playing with some things that I can show off. I can find them. My favorite thing to do is be annoying. So I was asked to be annoying for the greater good, and I made that happen. <laughs> um, so we've had some problems with polls getting placed on the wrong patron. Um, they have like the same name, but they live in a different town. So I added some extra code to this page. Whenever this dialog pops up that says the pickup library is different, um, it'll shake. And it turns red. It also plays a Koha sound. So um, we're hoping that kind of helps that problem of that, that problem. Because <laughs> uh, people do have similar names more often than I thought would happen. Um, the other thing I've been playing with, fighting with, is the mobile view on the OPAC. Uh, I had some complaints about how it feels and looks and such. Um, so like, I don't like how these tabs look, so I'm probably gonna change that. But specifically on holds, this isn't what it looks like in real life. Um, and I can't actually do that. I'm, I'm wildly prepared. Dang, my test person doesn't have a hold either. Uh, we'll put a hold on. Something here so it doesn't actually get pulled. Um, okay. So when you look at the patient's account in the mobile view on the holds tab, this is what you see. Um, so the complaint was you have to click here. And then if you want to send it, you have to click here. And then you have to click here. <laughs> so it's a lot of clicks. So what I was trying to pull off um, was cloning those buttons. So they're still here, but cloning them into that second column just so it's easy to pull it up on your phone. Um, you still have to click into the holds tab, but then you can cancel and suspend without extra clicks. Um, so that's what I've been fighting with a little bit. I think that's a, it'll be a better experience for the patrons. And the other thing um, was the cart. So I came to realize that a lot of people the bulk of our users are using our OPEC on mobile. They're not doing it on the computer. Um, the cart is the best way to really shop for things. Like if they have a list of results and they want to put multiple things on, we're, we encourage them to use the cart. But the cart um, is not a particularly fun experience on mobile. <laughs> so I've been uh, tinkering with that layout as well. Um, so if I put some things in the cart, And then if we're on a phone, it looks more like this. I don't refresh that. So it's all kind of scrunched together. The table itself isn't responsive at all. So that's just bleeding off the side and you can't, can't see what's going on there. Um, so what I've done so far is this. Um, so I made the table responsive using the data tables responsive plugin. And then when you click the checkbox, I made the checkboxes bigger so you can thumb them. Um, then it shows you the rest of the table. So you can go through your cart, check the ones you want, 
and then I moved the controls, the important controls to the bottom and made them static so that like it's at the bottom of your phone and easy to thumb again. Um, and this is how I found that bug where <laughs> if you select all, uncheck one, then hit clear all, it, it locks everything up because I was testing this. Um, yeah, so they can easily shop for their stuff, put it all in the cart, and then select all and place the hold from there. So I've just been trying to improve our mobile experience, I guess. And it's been mildly successful so far. Another thing I played with was adding some controls. I don't know if they're still showing. No. So like having another static floating bar at the bottom of the search results. Um, so they can interact with things. So like if I put a bunch of stuff in the in the cart, right? I still have to scroll all the way back up to the top to get there. So having that like on the screen at all times. Also, if they just want to select some things and place holds on what they've selected, having the place hold button on the screen at all times, just some of that um, improved usability. Is that it? I think that's it. And I don't remember why I went down this rabbit hole other than I had a patron complaint, and that's like top of my list. If somebody, <laughs> if a patron complained that they get my priority. So um, I haven't filed any related bugs yet. I figured with the, the cart, at least, I could file the fact that the table's not responsive um, and maybe file another bug that just makes UI suggestions. Um, the Or were you talking about the checkbox freeze up thing? Because I did file that bug, and I think you worked on it. Uh, yeah, I worked on that bug yesterday, I think, and then totally forgot it, that there's a <laughs> auto back. So I didn't do that part. Um, yeah, that's okay. Follow that up. But yeah, you should file the other bugs too. We can use that responsive data tables plugin <laughs> in more spots like the cart. So, and yeah. really any UI related suggestions or problems. File them. Fixing them on yours is good, but we fix them in co they're fixed forever. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to like have something to like say this is what I think it should look look like before I put any bugs out. So I wanted to get it like polished up and so I can include screenshots and things. Well, yeah. Awesome. When you file those, uh CC me on them. Okay. That will happen within the next six to 12 months because I'll get distracted by something else, but I'll do it. it. I get it. I think that's all I've been playing with lately. I do have another question. Uh, let me share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, we haven't really used lists an awful lot and we're trying to use it more but when you do new lists the last one you edited like appears at the top it's like the last one you touched is there any way to sort these things I know it it sorts it's sorted here one thing that makes that tricky is that in that drop down, that first drop, that one, uh, it only shows you, see how there's a view all button if you have more than what an X number of lists, 10 lists. Yeah. Um, you could sort those with JavaScript in some way, but you're only sorting those first 10. So mm -hmm. if you have uh, other lists that you'd like to show up there, it only shows the first 10 as hard coded. If yeah. I remember. Exactly. So um, that's what makes that difficult. 
and you I know you can you know if you want certain things to show here you can get around it by going into each one and saving them in a certain order of time yeah, <laughs> and then, and then yeah. you do get it to display but lists in the OPAC have a lot of problems it'd be nice if you could um, search lists too um, and that's I, I know there's a bug out there on that because it's been asked a couple of times and I'm a CC on it, but yeah, there's a lot of things that could be done better with lists. Certainly. Yeah, ours are a mess. So <laughs> I generally only encourage people to use lists to like make a list and then share the list because uh, trying to navigate through however many years of lists we have is not fun at all. And this was really more for staff creating, you know, some content lists. I'm not even sure how often our patrons use them or not. Patron lists are usually the worst. Books I'd like to read, and then there's like one book on it. Um, <laughs> we currently have... Row. We currently have 417 public lists. It would be nice to like have control over that top 10 though. Like you, yeah. you as staff could assign mm -hmm. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or something like that. So that those are always at the top. Well, like we've got Asian Pacific American Island or whatever that is month and Black History Month. And, you know, so like we might want to show, you know, and highlight certain ones, I guess, at certain times or. I mean, if you wanted to get fancy, I guess you could make a little block and just rebuild the list of lists yourself. <laughs> but then you'd have to maintain that block of JavaScript uh -huh. all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So fancy and time consuming. I was just looking to see if there's a route, route for lists in the API. So you could build that that way, but... There is not one yet. There is a bug on sorting the list of lists that's in discussion. It sounds pretty controversial. I can understand why it'd be in discussions. I'm sure there are people out there that love the way it works. Else people want to talk about today, of dub or otherwise. Conference registration is open, I hear. So I haven't done that yet, but I need to do that. Encourage people to go to that. I don't know what the plans are for SIGs, but we'll probably be able to talk to each other there. Barbara, you're on the conference committee, aren't you? Yeah. Where did you drop off? Um, I think we're slightly doing it differently, but I'd have to think on exactly what we're doing. That's really informative, I'm sure. <laughs> well, even regardless of that, I'm... Sometimes I'm in a... Sometimes I'm in a meeting, but I'm not paying attention, so. Never admit that. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing right now? Yeah, we know, George, we know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm sure the conference, I was looking at the schedule, I'm sure it'll be chock full of good 
web dev adjacent thing. So, um, is there a schedule already? I think so. Yeah, it's it's up oh. on the website. I don't think I imagine that one. I wonder if I'm speaking. <laughs> I believe you are. I think I might be. Yeah, uh, I usually am. You're doing a live. Oh, that's right. That's right. We're uh, talking about changes since last year's conference to the notices and slips. I remember that now. It was my idea. Yeah. Yeah, so there's some some interesting proposals. And I encourage anyone who hasn't looked at it to look at it here and otherwise watching later. Um, okay, that was the plug. <laughs> I don't have anything else to talk about if you guys are good. I know that the 2405 is becoming a hotter topic. Um, or not 24 or 5, 2311. Upgrades. People have been talking about upgrades and SIGs lately. So that may be something we want to talk about next month if there's any um, any major things coming out that um, we are excited about. I thought what for Bywater customers, I thought that we were going to all upgrade to 2405 in, in the fall, in August. August. And we're sure, not I don't to... know the plan. <laughs> That was my understanding is that uh, there was a move at Bywater to get us, uh, to get everybody, all the customers on the same version sooner. And so we were going to skip a, an upgrade to 2311 and everybody's going to go to 2305 or 2405 in August. And we definitely should start looking at stuff because that's two versions worth of Back stuff. To George. I don't know hmm. about uh, the schedule. I think it is August, but we are trying to make a concerted effort to be a little bit closer to um, yeah. the main or to get the features out to partners um, a little, a little quicker. Yeah. And um, last year when I, when I talked to Brendan uh, or Nate about um, the schedule for upgrades last year, I said, nobody wanted to upgrade in June or July because everybody's busy with their summer reading. Yeah. Um, and so they talked about having two upgrade dates a year, one, you know, two upgrade sessions a year, August and December, January, and uh, and moving everybody to the same version within that month time frame, because that's easier on the support staff because they don't have to go, well, which version are you on? Right. <laughs> so, and if it's all spread out over like a three month period, like it has been in the past sometime, we were on version we were on version like 15 11 at Knuckles for like almost two years because of changes here everybody the people i replaced didn't want to upgrade like the week before they quit and so they they said we'll just push we'll just forego that upgrade until the new guys here 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 and then we did like three versions at once and it was kind of it's kind of a lot. Yeah, the more versions you have to jump, the yeah, harder it is. It was harder for Bywater, and it was uh, harder for us because there hadn't been any training in a long time. There hadn't been any. Well, that's exciting to know, though. I didn't know that that we were skipping a version. So I'm going to start looking at 2405 and. Yeah, I don't need to know anything ready. about 2311. Just skip, you know, don't have to worry about any of those features. There was probably nothing added in that version anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all, yeah, don't worry about it. There's some good stuff in both, I think. Yeah, there is. A lot of new stuff, so. It's going to be fun. All right, I think we've we've covered the spectrum now. We talked about conference, we've talked about upgrades, we've talked about what we were actually supposed to talk about a little bit. So um, <laughs> if there's nothing else, I say we call it.
end the recording and then stick around for a second, Jason. I'll try. I'll see if I can find the buttons. They move around. There. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.